Hey guys, welcome back to Day to Day Chess. This is Sabina, and I hope you're ready to season up your Sunday uh, with an endgame study explained. For today, I've chosen a position created by Vancouver in 1922, so another position by him that's very important for us to know in Rook endgames. Um, additionally, for those who celebrated today was um, in Romanian, you know, in Orthodox calendar, San Nicolaus. So if anybody has this name and was their birthday or they are celebrating San Nicolaus, happy birthday to you guys. Um, what else? Well, here you can see my the link to my website and of course you can find it in the description below. So be sure to check it out. Um, I was mentioning to you when I started out this theme of season up your Sunday that you will find out soon why is it that I chose that name and now hopefully you can make the link. I always try to make links between things and so I'm really passionate about cooking and cooking dishes from different countries um, and try to stay, well, I try, it doesn't always work, but I try to cook as healthy as possible and um, I've I've decided to kind of make the link between cooking and chess. So hopefully you will enjoy my blog posts and check them out as often as as uh, as you like, and of course share them with friends. If you have specific recipes that you'd like to share with me, or some specific positions or game or games or anything, please send me uh, a message. Um, it's always super welcome. I already got a couple of ideas, so I'm really thankful to those who send me messages and I'll be sure to um, you know start implementing them as time goes by and um, aside from that let's just start today's uh, position and see if we're all familiar with it and if you can solve it so here's the position and it is white to move and of course white wants to win so be sure to pause the video and try to find the solution to your to the best of your abilities it's not as simple as it looks like. That's all I can tell you before you uh, step away. I mean, for a second. Alrighty, so uh, hopefully you are back now after you have solved the position and you're just checking your answer. So what I can say that, of course, in this position, white would like to just move the rook and promote the pawn. But we all know that if you're not moving the rook somewhere with check, Black is going to capture the pawn in h7, so there's no point in doing that. Uh, we also notice that Black's king is kind of stuck on the h-file, because if he's even thinking of getting out, going on the g-file, he would be losing instantaneously after rook g8. So, the first thing that comes to mind in this position with white is to play king f7. And of course, the idea is to come to g7, right, protect this pawn in h7, and then take the rook out and promote. Very simple, very basics. We have seen these ideas before. Everybody should be familiar with king um, and rook, rook and pawn and games. Uh, but the problem here is that although this rook is not far away to be able to give checks, what black can do is he can actually play king h5. And if white goes king g7 to protect the pawn and threaten, of course, to get the rook out, we have rook g6 check. And no matter where white goes with the king, f7 or f8, we can go back rook h6. And now anytime uh, white would move the king anywhere else but g7, black would be playing king g6. That's why I had the square highlighted. Could be playing king g6, after which the h7 pawn would be lost from white. So it's very important to realize this idea. Once you realize that this idea does not really work, we go back to the starting position and we're thinking, oh, let me try to get the same position, right, like this one, um, where it is black to move, because what is black going to do in this position? So when you know that, you're thinking, let me try to do a triangulation idea. So you come up with the, this move, king e8, thinking I'm going king e8, if he goes king h5 now, which, okay, let's say he goes there, then we go king f7, which is true, <laughs> it's correct, and now black is in Tuzvang, he has no good move, because, for example, I mean, moving the rook, there's no point, right? White would move the rook um, as well and then be able to promote, and uh, if we go, of course, on the g-file, there's no point, there's rook g8 check, so we go king h4, and now white would just go king g7, attacks the rook, no matter where you go, I, uh, let's say, 
rook h5 for example well i'm just moving the rook away anywhere i want basically and um, the next move for white is going to be h8 queen unless you give me one more check yeah. then still i make a queen so we see this idea too and then we realize hmm, maybe this works but then you have to look um, for the best continuation for black as well and what's the best continuation for black well he has two ideas one is of course to approach with his king to get that pawn back but in this case we obviously saw that it doesn't work and another idea is to try to move this rook a little bit further because if we move it further we'll be able to give checks from behind right so that would be an interesting idea so for example we can think about rook h5 and say maybe this works because now the rook is further and we can give checks yes but this is very similar to the idea before because white can still finish their triangle here king f7 and what to do next because if we move king h3 white will go to king g6 and now again we are stuck we don't have rook, rook uh, g5 check so we have to move again and then white will just exit with the rook and promote okay so if um, if that doesn't work rook h5 doesn't work what to do and the correct move here in this position is totally not according to any principle anything is to actually go on the opposite side of that pawn king h3 the idea is of course to be able to move the rook further behind and give checks from far away and like that white will never be able to approach the pawn or get their rook away from in front of the pawn and promote so here um if if white plays king f7 we just go rook h4 and then we're able to give checks from far away let's say king g6 rook g4 check what to do let's say king f5 okay rook h4 what next king g5 i mean there's no real triangulation in this position because anytime black has plenty of moves with the king and the rook to be able to give checks and um there's really nothing white can do to win this so we check king f king f7 it did not work we check king e8 it did not work so what to do how can white find a way to win this so hopefully if you had not solved it before when you paused the video and have seen these two lines hopefully now you're going to pause the video and try to solve it once again now you know some of the ideas going on and you'll try to uh, create some tricky thing to uh, win this position with white so the correct move here with white's king f8 king f8 not a very typical move because we are putting the king right where the rook wants to exit but it's the only move that wins the game because for example obviously black can still not play king g5 because of rook g8 check and the promotion that we got it over with very fast and for example if here if we go king h5 for example to give those checks remember from earlier well white just goes king f7 and then um what to do if we move the king back to h4 just king g7 and white is winning right the rook goes out and promote and um after king f7 if we just move the rook right there's nothing nothing we can do just we left with the rook from the protection of the pawn so black can sorry white can just get away with their own rook wherever they want on the eighth file and then promote very simple so the only um like good idea that black could try to hold on to the game a little bit longer is to play rook h5 to go with the rook a little bit further away to give checks from behind but but in this position white has actually two ways of winning they can play king g7 or they can play king f7 either one of them actually wins because king f7 this is just kind of a way to say you know what i'm not even going to protect my pawn and you're still going to lose because if you give me check i'll just play not king g6 but king e6 and um now you have to go back to h5 right and i go king f6 and black is again in tuzvang if rook h6 just king g7 and then move the rook and promote and if the king goes behind like 
in the other one, just king g6. I have attacked the rook. I've protected my pawn, and I can just exit with the rook and win. So this is the li little problem that um, black has. So after king f7 or king g7 as well, like I said, would be winning because after rook g5 check, we can go king f6. The rook comes back to keep our pawn attacked. And do we play king g6 now? No, obviously not, because there's rook g5. So now we can play king f7. And if rook f5 check, king g6. So basically, we didn't do much. <laughs> it wasn't very much of a difference, but we just basically got the same position. But both of the moves would actually work. Um, because white still did everything with tempo. If he had let black just one more move to go, go king h3 and then put the rook further behind, then black would have been able to make a draw, but unfortunately that didn't happen for him, and after rook h5, king f6, white is simply winning. So this was the position, guys. It wasn't very complicated. It was a very cute position, I thought, and I really wanted to um, share it with you to make sure we're always checking everything, because not always the simplest um, move that comes up to mind, it's working. So it's not only in end games that that happens. It happens in normal games when we're playing. It happens when we're trying to solve stuff. So be sure to double check your moves all the time. And with that, I let you for today. I really hope everybody's having a great Sunday, and I'll catch you up in the next video. Stay tuned for more. Bye.